Hi, Pet the Podcast is here. Money makes the world go round is a saying that seems to become more and more true as the years roll by. Food shopping, electricity and petrol are all necessities and are by no means cheap. That's why in today's episode, Dan and Lloyd give you five tips to be able to accurately predict your company's revenue and ensure some peace of mind as a business owner. So there's five steps to ensure you're generating predictable revenue for your business. The first one, have a think about what are your revenue goals each month to hit your revenue goal for the year. If you don't have that already, just work out a number that to break even our business needs this much and a goal that means a good amount will be this much and a stretched goal will be this much, just so you can see where you are on the sliding scale and the absolute minimum you need to cover your costs and survive. And once you've set that goal, step two is to set up some kind of process, if you don't have it already, to track the leads coming into your business. Now, there's a really great tool we use called HubSpot. There's a free version. Whenever a lead comes in, you can input that lead so that it's all tracked digitally and you've got all of that data there. So you need some kind of way of tracking how many leads are coming. And you may already have this. If you've already been tracking this kind of data, then that's great. But if you haven't, you need some data to make this work. And this is relevant to businesses of all sizes. If you're someone who makes model trains, and you're one guy who just gets people phoning them. Like, don't just think, oh, I don't get business leads. Like, they are your leads. If someone, if Tommy's calling up going, I'm thinking I might get you to produce another big, big old steam train. I don't know anything about model trains. <laughs> they are, that's what you'd be recording, right? Tommy's called and said he might be interested in, in the big old steam train. So you've set your goals. You've tracked the leads coming to your business. You probably need one to three months data to make this work, but the more data you have, the better. So you've been tracking leads for a month or three months or a year. You know, right, every month I'm generating X amount of leads on average. The next thing you need to do, number three, work out the value of an unconverted lead. So the way you work out the value of an unconverted lead, take the total revenue generated in that period of time. In your first quarter, you generated 3,000 pounds in revenue. Divide that by the number of leads that have come in in that time period. Now we know not all of them have converted, but it's the total revenue figure divided by the total number of leads. So let's try and make this simple. Let's say in the first quarter, you generated 3,000 pounds and you've had 10 leads. Trying to keep these numbers simple so that I can do the math. You basically divide the total revenue by the number of leads. So 3,000 divided by 10. So you know an unconverted lead is worth 300 pounds. Does that make sense, Lloyd? Yes, it does. You may have a business where you have a thousand leads and only two or three of them convert. Or you might have a business where like you have 10 leads and eight of them convert. The same calculation will work. So no matter how many customers you have to convert to get to that, it still works out. Once you get to this value of understanding how much an unconverted lead is worth to your business, you know, if that phone rings, you know that That's on average, that phone call is worth £300. So if that phone's ringing five times this week from different people, you know, £1,500. on average, that's going to be worth 1500 And it might be that one week that's worth 1000 and the next week it's worth 2000 it because, you know, you have good and bad weeks. But over time, you'll know that it's at that level. And then what you can do, step number four, is work out how many unconverted leads do you need to achieve your sales targets. Let's say, as we were saying, an unconverted lead is worth £300. And let's just say your sales targets are £3,000 a month. You know you need 10 unconverted leads to generate the £3,000 a month to hit your sales targets. So if you're not generating 10 leads a month, you know you're going to get behind with your sales targets. And that's what we call a lead indicator. So that's something showing you, and we track this on a weekly basis in our weekly meetings, I have to report to the team how many leads have we generated this month, or sorry, this week, to see if we're on target for our weekly goal. And the way that this allows us to predict the future, because we know from when when the phone rings or we get a message through our website or a LinkedIn DM of that lead initially, we know that it usually takes three or four months until that has an effect on our bank account, basically. If we've had one week where we know that we know we need 10 leads, is it a week or a month we need 10 leads, Dan? Uh, I can't remember the example. Okay, a month. Yeah. All right, this, in <laughs> this made-up example, we need 10 leads in a month, so that's two and a half 
a week, a week or two roughly. a week, roughly. So if we've had a week where we've got no leads, we know, oh, hang on, in three or four months, if this continues, we we're going to have a real issue down. here. Yeah. Or if we're like, hang on, the last three weeks, we've had five leads each week. We know that's double what we need. In three or four months, we're likely to, to be able to hit double our targets if we have the capacity to do so. Step five is tracking this on a weekly basis and then making appropriate changes if needed to ensure you're going to hit those numbers in the future weeks. It could be making changes to your marketing strategy. It could be trying and tweaking different things. It could be making more calls, trying to make those changes so that you know that you're going to hit the numbers you need to. If you just sit there and look at the numbers and know that, oh, we're not achieving what we need to achieve and not doing anything, nothing's going to change. If you're in a bigger business as well and you have the resource, you may have things that you know can increase leads if you need it. So you may know that, okay, our Google PPC campaign, we know we have to pump about this much money into it to get this many leads and if if leads are looking low then you can have that conversation with your manager whoever the decision maker and say look we're looking pretty low if the team's going to have enough work to do in three months time we need to increase the leads let's increase our budget uh, into the PPC campaign, make sure that we fill that gap so we don't have a room of 30 people that are working at 50% capacity. And I think a really important thing to make this all work is having that process where you're checking the numbers on a regular basis. The way we do this is in our weekly meetings, our weekly team meetings. And we use a system from the entrepreneur's operating system where we've got a scorecard to score everything we're doing. If you want more info on how you can do that, go and listen to episode 72 called How the Entrepreneur's Operating System is a Game Changer for Business. And in that episode, we break down how you can do that because that's a really important point to make this all work, isn't it? So there you have it. Make sure to keep these tips in mind when thinking about your company's possible revenue. Stay realistic, but stay ambitious. Rome wasn't built in a day. For more financial business advice, jump back to episode 91 of the Business Anchors podcast. We'll see you next week for another Knowlton Nugget.